This panel discussion is going to be all about Australian jobs, uh, the culture, diversity, upcoming job trends, and what the culture is like at an actual work environment. Uh, first of all, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Anshul, and I'm a marketing executive at Aussie's Group. Uh, I have with me my two panel members. Uh, first, Donna Batterdy. She is a senior consultant in data analytics at PwC. Now, I've had the honor of uh, hearing her speak at a couple of events, and trust me, I, I've always uh, left the event feeling inspired and motivated. Coming to my second panel member, uh, Peter Graves. He's the manager of work integrated learning and the lead of the social enterprise hub at Torrance University. I've also had the honor of working with him for over a year now, and again, a lot of inspiration, a lot of motivation. So, I'll open the floor for you to introduce yourselves and then we can start with our questions. Hi everyone, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Nice to meet everyone, all of you guys. So, um, I'm Donna, I'm working for PwC as a senior consultant, so it's been a wonderful couple of years of experience. And I came to Australia exactly five years back as an international student, same as you guys. So uh, initially, I didn't have a plan to work after my master. I just wanted to pursue my uh, further education in master of applied economics and economics. There's something a little bit different than data analytics or data science. But uh, throughout my study, I just discovered that data analytics, data science, this is something which is actually uh, getting to the road and also it's attracting a lot of attention. And it's something I really love because it's a combination of numbers and also um, that logical logical reasoning. Um, and then that's why I started my um, degree at Monash. And just after a couple of months later, I joined university. But it was not that easy because throughout my study for two years, I've been doing a lot of work, um, part-time, internship, volunteering, a lot of things that I can actually gain work experience in Australia so that I can stand out from your parts. That's, um, that's actually helped me a lot to grab that incredible opportunity with PwC, and I'm so happy to share all my experience and everything I can actually help you guys as an app into this yeah. Thank you and over to you, Peter. Thanks, Donna. Yeah, Peter Graves. Um, I uh, work for Torrens University. Um, a key part of my role is working uh, for the business faculty um, across Australia in creating uh, industry experiences for our students. So we have about 23,000 students in Australia. We're part of SEI, which is NASDAQ listed university, with about 120,000 students. Um, and so, yeah, my, my role is really all around student employability. So I have, I don't know how many staff we've now got working, Angel, but about 15 staff that are working uh, with students in consulting teams led by an academic or an industry expert and focus in on um, supporting enterprises including Sammy D who's up the back there today, it's great to play to make it. We're trying to support enterprises that are trying to make the world a better place. So in our jargon that's their purpose driven enterprises but that includes corporates through to startups. Yeah, so that's our great passion in life, and you know I think um, you know eighty percent, seventy eight percent of our students are international students. So it's a tough gig uh, to crack the the job market. So developing, as Donald was saying, getting investing in those kinds of uh, work experiences, cultural experiences that build your relevance to the Australian work culture are critical to being successful, I think, here, if you're seeking employment, you know. Um, thank you so much. Um, I would like to emphasize that there's a lot of value to be added here, and feel free to go, after this panel discussion, feel free to go up to them, um, talk to them about their experience. Um, there's a lot of value addition to be offered.
connect with them on LinkedIn. And um, on that note, I would like to start with my first question. Besides the cheeky banter, what are some key characteristics of the Australian workplace culture that newcomers should be aware of? Um, so at the moment, I'm working at a skill series hub. So over there, we have hired 400 international students for the last couple of years. And more than 80% of them are international students. So first of all, of course, it's diversity. And uh, second of all, I would like to emphasize on that. Uh, difference of uh, systematic difference. It is our um, I'm originally from Goya, so it's one of the Asian countries, so Asians were quite repetitive because of our hard characters, right? So um, it's um, not that hierarchical. So back home, it was quite hierarchical, and it's very obvious who is actually the boss and who is doing what it's very in terms of that format is different but over here Australian culture is different it's quite flat but even though you have to respect everyone and you have to have to be that ability of treating everyone equal so that's where you should find also when you integrate into that Australian culture and second of all in that importance of Australian culture on that be well and no matter how it's very different. And lastly, I would like to uh, talk about learning and development opportunity, which actually I've never heard of before from my, from my culture, but here it's very important. And also, they actually really do care about your learning, your opportunity, your development. Not only they're asking you to work well, but also at the same time, as a young people, you have to learn and grow at that. Thanks, John. Now, we weren't going to turn this into a quiz this morning, uh, but uh, look, Angela's willing to give a prize uh, for the, the person that gets this this uh, this question right. Um, thank you, Angela, for that. Uh, that's very generous of you and uh, unexpected of you, yeah, as, a, as it was my offer of your gift. Um, how many people in Australia? How many people live roughly in Australia? How many million? How many? 28. 20, I've, I've got 25 in my head. Could be wrong. There could have been a few people that have, you know, recently migrated or uh, been born since I last counted. But yeah, uh, so there's that's uh, so that's that's worth a price, Angela. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, including my business card, you know, like that, that's very value to you. Uh, okay, and so of those 25 million. Um, how many, how many people uh, were born overseas? Uh, as a ratio, it's about one in four. So there's no price for that one. And lastly, uh, what was my third question? I did have a third question. Um, where? So for those people that were born overseas and came to Australia, where where are most of them from? Which which country? India. India. No, it, it from the UK. <laughs> yeah. So I actually you need to give me the prize because I won that one now. Yeah. So that's a bit of a surprise, isn't it? But if you look at you know more more recent trends. You know, it, it is it is places like India that are uh, big sources of of people. So you know, we um, we are a really mixed uh, uh, community, society, nation, with people from all over all over the world. Um, I you know, people would say this uh, that it's it's probably one of the most successful multicultural <coughs> countries in the world in terms of the, its ability to embrace. I kind of, a bit, bit like you were saying, Donna, I kind of, you know, and, and I'm Australian, so obviously I could be quite biased there. You know, I'm, I'm um, Anglo background, born here. But the, the, I, I kind of think, um, from an employment perspective, employers are willing to give people a go, yeah? And as you were saying, Donna, they, they are quite interested in you as a person, um, we would always emphasise 
that okay, the study results were you know uh, help maybe get an interview, but they're really wanting to know more around the rich experiences that you've had. So I kind of feel like um, for international students, which is kind of eighty percent of our student population, it's still a tough gig, right? When you're competing in a competitive job market, um, but it is those different types of experiences that add weight to your studies rather than just relying on studies that are going to be compelling to to an employer. Thanks for that. Um, and just FYI, the winners and the prizes will be announced by Peter, by himself, on his oh, name. Oh, really? Oh. <laughs> so, um, we stressed upon the fact that most of, there are a lot of uh, international students nowadays coming in. Um, my question to you is, what would be your one tip for successfully transitioning into a workplace that they experienced in their hometown to a workplace in Australia? Yeah, I would say network and make a lot of friends and willing to talk more. And especially if you're from an Asian culture, learn how to do that sort of talk because it's something different you've never experienced. And it, some, sometimes it even looks all like to talk to some strangers about your life, what are you doing on the weekends, what is actually that reach that connects you to that person. And also, um, it will give you that key to connect that person on that next interaction. Just ask them, oh, you'll be talking about that basketball earlier, how it's going, which team do you go for? These kind of things is actually sparks the small, small things and make you an um, lot, lot, lot of opportunities for you. Because it's not only about your work and escape, but also you have to learn, have to win in a fun way. Also, make a lot of friends and open your eyes, and there's a lot of opportunity. Because um, besides your skill, what actually values in a strong workplace is who you are as a person. Are you just that hard skilled person who knows how to code it, or are you that integration between that human side, your humanity, as that soft skill who knows how to talk to other person, who knows how to listen, also who knows how to <coughs> have to open that other person's heart and also make that connection. It's a different level of skill. But coding, that uh, programming language, there is something you can learn. But that soft skill is a different kind of, different level of skill. It, it actually valued a lot, especially in consulting, consulting work. So I would really say start from that point start talking and willing to give it a go. And I know it is very hard for us because we are kind of shy and it gives us that trembling, also that very um, not comfortable feelings, getting shy and that pink, uh, pink blushes. Even now I'm experiencing that, but it's a kind, it's a part of my learning. I am willing to do that because I know without this experience, I'm not going to grow. Without this experience, without this pushing, I'm not going to go up to my uh, level, next level. So give it a go and be cor courageous and um, yeah, just just confident, be confident and get believe in yourself because it is, it does work, it does work. Yeah. Before we go on to Peter, I would just like to em emphasize on a point that Donna mentioned. Find common points, I would say, because um, Yes, the culture is different. A lot of things are different, but finding finding commonalities in terms of sports, in terms of what do you like to eat, uh, where do you like to go out, etc., etc. That's a really good point that helped me as well in the start. So find commonalities. But I'll hand it over to Peter as well because he um, leads a lot of teams of students of employees. So yeah, over to Peter. Thanks, mate. I, I kind of think you know what's. Uh, critical in the world of work is and it, building what Donna said, building, it's building relationship and building trust, um, building shared understanding. 
I think, you know, when when you, you rock up here from wherever country you may have been, your logical starting point is to find, you know, people that from your home country, yeah, and, and build your community around that, which is really important, and that's that's a good starting point. But what's going to be critical is your ability uh, to network and build relationship um, with other cultures, other other different types of people. I think especially like in the, you know, I had a consulting company in Singapore and, and in three cities. Doing business in Adelaide was always very different to other spots. Um, it relied far more heavily on relationship and trust. I think regardless, you know, this comes back to the nature of getting a gig, getting a job. Yep being technically good, having good results, but a lot of it is about the other activities and connections that you've been able to make in order to create both a cultural understanding and kind of a, I'd call it a technical understanding of the world of working. And when I mean technical, I mean the discipline that you've learned through your studies. What does that look like in the Australian context? What connections and relationships have you built that demonstrate that you are part of a bigger network, a bigger movement that will help build the confidence of the prospective employer that you can get the road running. And obviously, uh, you, you barracking the Adelaide Crows um, is a big turning point in getting a good job. Um, you have to be wary if you are going, this is a joke, guys. If you, were, if you, were, if you barrack for port power, right, in Australia, in South Australia, you, that may limit your ability to get a job. But if you barrack for the crows, you know, is it? Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, who do you barrack for? For Port Adelaide. Oh, you're kidding me. Uh, I didn't know that, Angel. Zach in. Yeah. Uh, but that's just an example of banter, you know, is, which is about having fun, you know, teasing others. There's a point where that kind of can push too hard, but um, part of that, Building relationship and understanding is is asking those little things about you know which footy club do you do you support? Did you watch the cricket on the weekend? You're watching the World Cup, uh, whatever it may be. But what you're trying to do is to build rapport and build, build trust. Um, and I think in the South Australian context, if if you're part of an industry body or even like part of your local community that can also help and guide you towards employment as well. The number of people that, I don't know what the stat is, Donna might know, but the number of people that apply, uh, get a gig via SEEP or something like that, I think it's something like, isn't it? Something like two thirds of jobs um, are through network, you know, secure through networks rather than uh, through job boards and stuff like that. Could be wrong, but, but building relationship, building rapport, building empathy, building trust um, is key to actually being able to be successful within a workplace. Well, thank you very much. That has answered two of my next questions, to be very honest. But um, gently swaying from the topic of networking and coming to this day and age and talking about technology. Now, we've seen chat GPT affecting and integrating itself into each and every industry to be very honest even in marketing every every industry out there so what are some hard skills and soft skills that you would recommend um, for students to start building from now so that it's easier for them to secure a job even while they're in their penultimate year or even in their last year um. First of all, just try to discover yourself, see yourself whether you lie in which category. That 100% hard skill or the mix or a kind of soft skill. Yes. So if you are on that either one thing stream, try to uh, get on to the middle one and try yeah. to grasp, grasp um, the basic skill of probably the technological side but also start learning the soft skills. So at the moment, um, in our field, specifically technology side and also health side, 
uh, everything related to the game and AI is getting boomed. And everyone is so interested in how to actually start using it, leveraging onto that um, new AI. But at the same time, we need people who are who have that critical mentality. If there is any kind of damage in the society, in the business side, also um, uh, we need people who does have a hard skill of that gen AI, who understand what actually happens on the background and how to leverage also get some change adjustment into those things. So we need that two types of it. Of course that technical side, but also on that other hand side, critical um, yeah, critical ability of thinking and also coming up that business solution that consultants can One of the things I think for me and, and Donna also touched on it, but we, we emphasize within um, all the students that we involve in our consulting projects and a greater portion of master's level students, you know, we, we emphasize that the employability skills, so they can be technically really good within the discipline that they're studying, yeah, but what we're trying to do is to create opportunities for them to apply their discipline to a real world project, but through which they demonstrate um, and build their employability skills. Any any thoughts on what an employability skill looks like? Employability is about what will help to make you compelling and pitch and be competitive in the job market. Any thoughts? Any skills that come to the top of your mind? What was that one? Yeah, stakeholder engagement, yeah. Uh, so if we, they, we would refer to them as the soft skills in the university, we call them our smart skills. It's what we're embedding across all the curriculum. Um, uh, yep, yeah, uh, applying your technical skills, but through which you're developing your organisational skills, your planning, your teamwork skills, your communication skills, your ability to deal with difference, um, the, the ability uh, to deal with uncertainty, uh, to, deal with, to deal with complexity, uh, to deal with stakeholders that don't necessarily fall on the same page. And I know for some of our students, for example, they, they, was, you know, they would much prefer to do their own project, you know, because they only have to manage themselves. But if you tip five or six other students into that mix, that creates a whole lot of complexity. And, and some of them, yeah, just don't like it at all. But it's fundamental to the learning experience. You know, it's fundamental to the world of work. You're not going to, you know, if you're a, if you're a uh, data analytics uh, type person or a marketing type person, you're going to be generally working in multidisciplinary teams. You're probably providing a service to other elements of the business that you're working in, right? Your ability to work with a diversity of players to demonstrate value and understanding of their needs and expectations are going to be fundamental to you being successful in that role. So you can be very savvy with the what you've learned at uni and get really good grades, but at the end of the day, it's what we would call these soft skills that are going to be critical. And you know, part of that as an international student, if you're an international student, is your ability to adapt to different cultures and different contexts. We all have to have that skill, you know. Um, if we play it safe and just think, I'll just find to work with people that are like me, um, you know, that's, that's, that's not a good outcome, you know. And if you're looking at bringing together different skill sets to deliver an outcome, you don't want everyone to be the same as you. You want a diversity of skills, opinions, people that will challenge, yeah? So that's where it gets scary, you know, because in some, in some senses, you don't know, you don't have all the answers going into those situations and how they unfold. And you don't necessarily have a whole lot of power uh, and you've got to back yourself to condition a bit like, you know, when you get nervous or because you don't know what's going to happen, how this is going to unfold. That is something, the more that you do it, the more you become comfortable with it and the more you're willing to take risks and to enter into the unknown. 
doesn't mean you're silly and you don't prepare for that situation. But increasingly, you're able to work in dynamic environments where you don't have all the answers. You've got a diversity of opinions and ideas, and you're part of a process to explore those ideas and create a good outcome, you know, and an outcome that meets the different needs of the different stakeholders. Um, I believe that's a really great point to end on, and I'd just like to put it out there. Um, this time, go and talk to individuals and ask them about their experience. Ask them what clicked from them for them. Ask them about what their journey was like, and just get, get insights from there on. And because why try to reinvent the wheel if you can ask them what worked for them, and then it basically implement that in your lives. We'll 